Good evening and welcome to this lecture on an introduction to intermittent fasting. My name is uh, Dr. Don Pelto and I am going to be talking about this. This is the second time that we've talked about this topic of intermittent fasting to the Shrewsbury Public Library. First, I'd like to thank those that are at the library that helped us to set this up. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a podiatrist, and you're probably wondering why in the world is a podiatrist talking about intermittent fasting? Uh, I'll get there in a second, but in my profession, I see diabetics every single day. About 25% of my practice are diabetics, and type 2 diabetics, about 100% of them are, are having some issues with weight, which weight then leads to insulin resistance that leads to diabetes. And that's why I've gotten int introduced to some of these topics in terms of helping my patients. And I also uh, have done it personally for about three years now. Uh, I wanna start here and, and share this with you. This is something my little six-year-old daughter made with me. And it's all a matter of perspective. So when I got this, I was so happy. And I looked at it and I said, wow, that's so beautiful. Look at what she said. She says, the best dad ever. And I was, this is great. It's sitting in my bureau in my you know, bedroom. And then the perspective came in because we sent it out to some people and they, and, they, and they read it a little bit closer. And they said, it says beast dad. And because she doesn't know how to spell yet, she wrote beast dad. And that just made me think of, there's a, there's a perspective of what we think we should do and what we think should work. And then there's actually the different perspective, what actually works. What I wanna to talk to you about today are things that aren't just theoretical, but these are things that work uh, for my patients and work for a lot of people. And the focus is gonna be mostly on intermittent fasting, but we are gonna talk about some other things. I wanna share a patient experience as we begin. This was a patient of mine and uh, you can see he was quite uh, overweight, still obese here, overweight. And then he kind of went down to, in 2021, he is a very, very uh, skinny. And this is a typical type of a patient that I see in my practice. And it's hard because I'm not the only one that's talking to my patients about their health. And what I started to realize is after I treated a patient, let's say I treated them for their ingrown toenail, or I treated them for their plantar fasciitis or one of these other conditions I treated them for, and they're better. I always end my conversation and I say, okay, Mrs. Jones, if we were meeting here in a year from now, what would make you happy regarding your health? That's what I say. And can you imagine what everyone says? 100% of the people that I see, they say, you know, doc, I'd like to lose some pounds. I'd like to lose some weight. That's what they tell me. And when they tell me they want to lose some weight, I ask, well, what's been working for you? What have you been trying? And I, I got frustrated because everyone is really trying hard. And usually what they tell me is they're trying to work out. And when they work out, then they get hurt with their feet get hurt. So they get a tendonitis or a plantar fasciitis or a foot fracture or something else because they're trying to work out. And then when I ask these same people, I ask them, do you like to work out? And the majority of the people, they don't like to work out. And I said, well, why are you working out? And they say, I I'm working out because I want to lose weight. Okay. Working out isn't a very effective way of losing weight, especially as we get older and our joints hurt more and we're not able to do it. So if you're using working out as a weight loss method, when you're not able to work out, all the weight's going to come on. And I think working out is great. I think it's good for your mind. I think it's good for your body, good for your joints, but I don't think it's a good way to lose weight. And then I, then I ask my patients, well, why, what are you trying right now? Well, I'm, I'm trying this diet. I'm trying this diet. I'm trying to eat low carb. I'm trying to eat keto. I'm cutting out the sugar. And what I find is people, they get some temporary wins they get some temporary successes with these types of diets, but I don't really see that it's, it's, it's a long-term uh, result for them. It's not really a long-term success for them with dieting. Some can do it, but my, but my main concern is I see a lot of times this seems to come back with patients, okay? So 
let's get into what is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is basically periods of eating and then not eating. I know that doesn't sound really complex. You might've been looking for something much more sophisticated, but basically intermittent fasting is just a periods where you're intermittently not eating. In those not eating times, for example, you're fasting when you go to bed, let's say at 10 o'clock at night and you wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, for those 10 hours, you're technically fasting. And that's why the first meal of the day is called breakfast because you're breaking your fast. For a lot of people, that's a fast that they're doing every day. So you're already fasting. It's just a matter of kind of extending and opening up that window. Uh, I, I want to, before I go into a lot of the details about the fasting, I want to talk about who shouldn't fast. Those that are under the age of 18, that are ch children or young adults, they probably shouldn't fast. Even if they're overweight, they, they shouldn't uh, do this fasting. Those that are frail, those that are very weak, uh, those that are pregnant, you shouldn't be fasting when you're, when you're pregnant or breastfeeding because you have, you have to give more nutrients to the child. So fasting really isn't, uh, isn't indicated. And then also, if you have an eating disorder, you, you shouldn't be fasting, right? Anyone that has bulimia or anorexia, fasting is not starving. It's, 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 uh, it, it's not that, okay? Um, I also wanna, before I really get into the details about fasting, I wanna go over uh, who needs medical supervision. Basically medical supervision should be those that are diabetic. Uh, maybe if you're just diet controlled, maybe not necessary, but if you are on insulin or certain medications, you should at least run it by your doctor. Okay, don't run it by me. I am a, I'm a foot doctor. You should run it by your doctor but you should be educated before you go and talk to your doctor, okay? Why, why do I say that? Because a lot of doctors, they, they're not familiar with fasting and they, they, they tend to prescribe or recommend the same things. And what do a lot of the doctors recommend? They say, well, why don't you eat less and work out more, okay? If eating less and worked out more worked, we wouldn't have fat people. We wouldn't have people with obesity problems because it, it doesn't work. It's not a discipline problem. It's actually a hormonal problem. And we'll get into that, how, how fasting can really help this hormonal problem, okay? So in, in my other question is, when you go and talk to your doctor about intermittent fasting, if they do have a weight problem, they're probably not gonna be too up on it, right? Because you, you, you don't wanna talk to an overweight doctor about something that's gonna they're, they're not going to understand it because they're not, they're not doing it. So you have to be, you have to be careful about that as well. Also be careful if you're taking prescription medications. Um, if you're taking any type of gout medication, uh, or if you have liver, kidney, or heart disease. So those are people that need medical supervision uh, for intermittent fasting. Um, what's the research? Everyone's always interested about research. If you look, uh, this was in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's, a, it's an article that's on the effects of intermittent fasting and health and aging and disease. All of the, the, the most recent uh, research towards anti-aging is actually a lot of the fasting work uh, about not eating. A, a lot of the, the healthiest people, uh, in, they always talk about the Mediterranean diet. And one thing that they, you know, the Mediterranean diet is a low carb type of a diet, but they don't, they don't, a lot of times they forget to mention that it's a very religious area too, where they do a lot of religious fasting as well. And a religious fasting as well is a different type of fasting. What we're gonna be talking about isn't so much like a religious fasting for uh, maybe Ramadan or for another religious reason, because all of the, the large religions, they do a type of fasting that's a spiritual fasting. What we're gonna talk about is more the, the health effects of, of fasting and then go over some of the big questions. Um, I wanna start and in, in talk about uh, the benefits of intermittent fasting. And once again, for those that have arrived, if you guys have questions as we're going through this, I wanna make sure I can answer them. I can answer them either during or after. Uh, a little bit about my experience with fasting. I've been doing fasting for about three years and I've been doing one meal a day, Monday through Friday, maybe a three hour window, Monday through Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, it's usually an eight hour window. 
And I'll kind of get into those different types of fasts, but I'll talk about some of the benefits that people say and things that I found. Um, first of all, intermittent fasting, it simplifies your day. Um, we don't realize how much of our day is occupied with eating and making eating decisions or shopping decisions. So if you're having to eat your breakfast, you're having to eat your snack, your lunch, your midday snack, your dinner, your, your bowl of ice cream before you go to bed, you know, all these things, it, it just kind of com complicates things. Whereas if you only have to eat during a three or a four hour window or, or an eight hour window, it really simplifies your life. A lot of the research goes towards fasting in terms of helping you live longer. And this is a lot of the longevity research is on, are on people that, that don't eat as much. And so that's another reason. It could reduce the risk of cancer. And the reason for that, especially with sugars, uh, sugar is kind of almost like carcinogenic because the cancer feed on it. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If you are doing a, a period of fasting and your body has to kind of basically eat, eat, eat its own self, right? Because that's what your body does when you're doing prolonged fasting. It usually eats the, the fat first and then it eats other, other, other cells. It's going to tend to eat the more damaged cells, like the carcinogenic ones, versus the good cells. And everyone asks that question, if I'm gonna lose um, muscle instead of fat? Well, uh, the research shows you do not lose muscle, you, you do lose, you're gonna use your fat first. And even people that are like Olympic runners that have very, very low body fat, you're still gonna burn the fat before you're gonna burn your muscle. It takes a lot. A lot of us have uh, enough fat that we're gonna burn that fat. We're gonna use that fat before we start using muscles. Uh, I, I've found that it does save money. It's a good way to save money. And actually, I don't think intermittent fasting is gonna become all that popular. And, and my reasoning for that is because no one can make money off of it. That's my whole, you know, I'm not a diet doctor. Once again, I, I, I work with feed, I do podiatry, but like, how can anyone make money on just telling someone not to eat? You're gonna, you're gonna spend less money on food. You're not gonna have to cook as much. You're not gonna have to go grocery shopping as much. You're gonna get healthier. You're gonna get off your medications and all these things. So there's no, you know, the, there's, you're not gonna really be able to, you know, you can't make any money on it. No one can sell this. That's why it's not really popular. Everyone wants to, what they wanna do is they wanna sell foods, right? They wanna sell you this low carb food or this low carb snack or this low carb bar, or this low carb protein shake or this, the special drops that you put in your water for a thousand dollars. Like everyone's trying to sell these things where, whereas intermittent fasting, you can't, you can't make any money on it. I don't think it's gonna become important or become really popular. You also reduce your weight, right? If you ask a little kid, like my, my, my son or my daughter, they're five and six, ask them, you know, hey, I, I'm looking to lose a few pounds. What are they gonna tell you? They're gonna say to skip a few meals. Right? It's, it's pretty obvious. You're going to lose weight. If you don't eat, you're going to lose weight. But I'll explain exactly why that happens. It's not just a calorie in, calorie out type of thought that most people think of. And then in my opinion, I think it's much, much easier than dieting, intermittent fasting. That's why I really got interested in it. I tried different types of diets and I found intermittent fasting much easier. And I'll, I'll share a little experience uh, quickly from, from one of the uh, doctors uh, that wrote a lot of the, the books on this. And I'm gonna, I'll share this book after. His name is Jason Fong. And he is a nephrologist, which is a kidney doctor. And he's in Canada, Toronto. And he was struggling with his patients much in the same way a kidney doctor only sees people when they're basically in kidney failure. So with the really, really bad diabetics. And I see the really, really bad diabetics that have neuropathy and then they have to have amputations and they have to have other uh, problems with their feet. And so he, he was kind of saying, well, how can I really help my patients get better? And he tried to do a lot of different diets, having them eat less, having them eat low carb. But what he found, and it's the same struggle that I've had, is to eat really good, to eat like vegetables and organic meat and eat all this food that's really, really good for you, it's really expensive. To eat all this really organic grass fed, fed everything is really expensive. And where he was living in Toronto, he had a lot of ethnic background people. So people, let's say they were Asian or from other countries and they had their foods that they were used to eating. 
it's really hard. A, a lot of people that are on this call here on this Zoom, you've been eating this way for 50, 60, 70 years. And you've been eating that same way. Okay. You may make little modifications, but to make big changes is really hard. And so what he found out, he said, he just figured out, you know, it was a lot easier. He tried for years to have them change what they eat. And he said, you know what? I just think it's so much easier to have people, instead of change what they eat, just don't eat. I know it sounds real simple, but it's true. You just, instead of changing, because how can you, how do you change permanently? That's called a diet. And who likes to stay on a diet forever? No one does. No one. And that's the benefit of the fasting is you're not really dieting. Now, does it work if you tend to eat better, low carb? It does work better. If you exercise, it tends to work better. But even if you simply just skip a meal or two a couple times a week, you're going to see the benefit. And that, that was the, the biggest benefit to me. And I'll, and I'll explain a little bit more. So let's go into a little bit how it works. Um, how intermittent fasting works. The gist of it is that intermittent fasting, it reduces a hormone called insulin. And you're probably all familiar with insulin because that's the same hormone that people inject when they have diabetes, when they have really high blood sugars, they inject insulin and it stores the blood sugar in the cells. That's what insulin does. So insulin stores sugar or it stores, you know, sugars into the body as fat. Okay. So that's the real simple explanation. So let's look at this. This is an eight hour eating window. It's an example of a 16 hour fasting window. And this person, what they do is they eat lunch and then they eat dinner. When you're in the eating phase of lunch and dinner, you're storing fat. When you're in the fasting stage, you are burning fat. It's really as simple as that. Does that, I don't know if that makes sense for you guys. Does that make sense? Okay. There is a question. I'm going to answer this question as I go, and I'll explain this on the next slide. But the question is, do low carb diets without fasting reduce insulin levels too? Yes. They do, and I'll explain that in the next slide. Is fasting another way to do that? Yes. So let me show you this next slide. So what you talked about is eating low carb, and that's called carbohydrate restriction, okay? Carbohydrate restriction are uh, foods that, that if, you're, if you're restricting your carbohydrates, you're gonna have a lower insulin level. But just so you know, anything that you put in your, in your mouth is gonna slightly increase your insulin, okay? So there are certain things that increase insulin less, okay? The things that increase insulin are fats, proteins, carbohydrates with fats, and then carbohydrates like breads and things like that. Do you, do you see here that fats and proteins, which means like meat and fatty foods like High, high, like eggs and, and cheeses and things like that, and, and butter and things. That, it does increase your insulin, but it increases it less. And, and that's why they recommend a low carb diet. So a carb of more protein and fat, because it raises your insulin less. But anything that you put in your mouth is going to raise your insulin level. So the only way to get really low insulin levels is to not put anything in your mouth, okay? And I'll, get, I'll go over what you can drink. There are some things you can drink. But there, so the things that increase insulin are a high carbohydrate diet, and we all know that. Everyone's always known that if you want to lose some weight, you cut out the cakes and you cut out the breads and you cut out things like that. Um, other things though that you might not be thinking of that increase insulin are the frequent meals. A lot of people, they try to lose weight by eating six or seven meals. Like they, they eat three meals and then three snacks thinking they're gonna lose weight. That's ludicrous to think that you're gonna eat seven meals and lose weight. Every, everyone knows that you're gonna lose more weight if you eat one meal. You can eat all those seven meals in one meal and you're gonna still lose weight. The problem is every time you eat, you're having that spike of insulin. 
And then also being more sedentary increases insulin, not sleeping well, uh, empty calories. But there are the things that decrease insulin. So that would be a, a carbohydrate restricted or a low, low carb diet, low calorie diet, um, consolidating meals. And what I mean by that is, let's say you normally eat three meals now. And this is what I do. I used to eat three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And now I eat one meal. And so I put, and I, in that one meal is almost like a meal and a half because I eat a, I eat a pretty big plate. And, and so that that's consolidating. You're not reducing calories. We're not talking about calories. What we're talking about is insulin. Okay. You can try to reduce a little bit, but then, you know, you have to, you have to make sure you have enough to, to, to burn, to, to live high intensity exercise. Once again, high intensity exercises does a good job at reducing insulin. Okay. But some people can't do it. And it's not very efficient. Um, I used to work out more, and a lot of time, a part of the reason I like fasting is I don't have to work out as much. I don't really like working out. I, I like being skinny. I don't like working out. Um, so, and then high nutrient density, so very healthy foods. Any questions on this? Does this make sense? Basically, everything that you put in your mouth is going to increase your insulin. Okay. And what's going to reduce it is a low carb diet a little bit, intermittent fasting more, and high intensity exercise even more. Um, I'm focusing more on the intermittent fasting portion. Low carb, I find is helpful, but the challenge is doing that consistently forever. Forever is the hard thing because whenever you go back to off the low carb, and if you start eating three meals again, the, the, all, that, all that weight loss is going to come back. And that's the big thing people find. So let's talk about ways to reduce insulin. Okay. In my opinion, what we're talking about here today is going to be intermittent fasting. That's the main, the mainstay of reducing insulin. It's just the most potent way. Okay. I didn't say it's the easiest way. I say it's the most potent way. And like anything else, it just takes practice. Okay. You have to take practice. Okay. Um, and uh, there was a question, yes, about how to deal with um, manage hunger. We'll, we'll get there in a second. Um, another thing that you can do is to reduce refined carbohydrates. So a sugar um, in refined carbohydrates would be like sugar and breads and muffins and bakery goods and things like that. Sugar is addictive, okay? If you can reduce that, by eating more high fat food or natural fats like fish, avocado, nuts, things like that, that will fill you up. I don't know about you. If I eat a really big salad and tuna on it, and then I'll have some nuts on it and then some cheese, I'm, I'm full. Okay. But if you give me a piece of bread or a muffin or a cookie or a cake and I start eating it, I just eat more and more and more of it because those high carbohydrate things, they just kind of make you want to eat even more. It's really addictive, frankly the carbs. Um, I, do I still eat a little bit of carbs? I do, but I, I try to monitor it. Like I do it like special day type of carbs or special times of the week, like the weekend type of things. I try to avoid doing it all the time. I'm not very strict. I used to be more strict. I'm not as strict anymore. Uh, of eating foods and fiber. And so what I mean by that is you're not going to have orange juice. You're going to have a whole orange or not apple juice, but a whole apple. Uh, and just by the way, everyone thinks that fruits are, are really uh, healthy. They're really not. It's much better to eat vegetables and uh, maybe some berries, nuts and berries and cheese and things like that. But fruits really aren't as good as our parents taught us that fruits were. They have a lot of sugar in them, especially diabetics know that. Um, a little apple cider vinegar can go a long way at reducing a little bit of the, your insulin levels and some spices and herbs can do that as well. Um, let's talk about the types of fasts, okay? I'm gonna start with the very simple and then kind of get to the more complex. Um, when we talk about fasts, the way I did it is I, I took about, I think it was about a six month period to learn how to do it. Most of our problems come with this thing of trying to do everything at once. And I, and I would not advise you guys to do that unless you're already fasting, then you can go to the next level, but go slow. Uh, and I'll kind of walk, walk you kind of how I did it. And you might want to consider doing it that way, but it takes practice. Okay. It takes practice. You have to be nice to yourself. Okay. 
it's good to be nice to yourself. Don't be mean to yourself. If you, if you can't make it, you can't make it. If you're hungry, you eat. If you're feeling bad, you eat. You know, it, it's fine. Just take, if you're hangry, you eat if, if you want to eat. Okay, the first type of fast is, is the most common one, and it's called the 16-8 fast. This is the, the most popular one that people know about. Um, what 16-8 means is you eat within uh, an eight-hour window. And what I mean by that is basically you're eating, let's say lunch is noon and after dinner you finish at eight. So that's an eight hour window. And then you're fasting for breakfast. So that's called a 16, eight. This is the most common one. This is what I started with. So basically I, I, um, I just didn't eat breakfast and you can, so what can you have when you're fasting? Well, you can have black coffee. That's what you can have because black coffee doesn't, doesn't increase your insulin at all. No, you can't have sugar. No, you can't have milk. No, you can't have half and half. If you need something, which I would wean you off as quick as possible, you can do maybe a little heavy cream. So heavy cream, the fattier it is, the better. But there's a new coffee that I'm starting to drink called Bulletproof Coffee. Uh, and I'll show you how to make that. But I put, I put butter in it. I put butter and MCT oil. And I'll explain that in a second, in a little bit later. But that's what I do. For, I did that in the beginning. So basically I was doing black coffee in the morning. I brought lunch lunch at work. And then I had dinner when I got home and that's what I was doing. But I didn't, I want to be very frank. You don't see much unless, unless you have a lot to lose or you're eating all the time. Now you're not going to see that much improvement with this. What's going to help it is if you, those two meals you do eat are like low carb and, and, and things like that, you're going to see more improvement, but just doing fasting, you're probably not going to see that much. I didn't see much. Okay. It's very, very slow. That's what I mean. Uh, the next one is called the 24. And what this is basically, this is what I do. And I've been doing this for three years. I, um, Monday through Friday, I fast. I don't eat breakfast or lunch. And all I do is I eat from dinner. So the, the 20 hour fasting is I eat from, let's say 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's my four hour window. And my fasting, I do this Monday, Monday through Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, I usually do two meals. So I'll eat two meals on the weekends. And that's also good, just so you know, it's good to vary things up so your body doesn't get used to something. If you do like this all the time, your body's going to get used to it. So it's good to eat, eat a little bit more some days, do longer fasts other days. That's totally healthy for your body. And this is what I, I do. So the, how did I transition from the one meal or from the two meals to the one meal? The way I did it is I picked like a Wednesday. Okay. So let's say I fast breakfast, breakfast. And then on Wednesday, I said, you know, I'm going to try to not eat lunch today. And I thought to myself, I think I'm going to die. That's what I thought. I really did. Because I have a partner in my practice and he doesn't eat lunch a lot of times. And I, he's a, you know, ultra marathon or runner. And, and I, he's not doing it for this reason, but I, I thought I was going to die. Okay. So I, I just want you, if you think you're going to die, that's how I thought. I thought there's no way I can do this. This is unhealthy. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it. You can do it. Okay. You can do it. So what I did is I psyched myself up and on Wednesdays, I just, I, at lunchtime, I kept extra busy and I drank coffee and I made it till I got home and I didn't die. And I did that for about a month. And then I, then I did that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then once I was doing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, my confidence increased. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, it's actually easier for me not to bring lunch to work. And I, I got even lazier. And so I said, and I think fasting is for lazy people. Okay. It is. Cause you don't have to bring lunch. You don't have to bring breakfast. You don't have to pay anything. And so I just stopped bringing lunch and then I just drank a coffee. So I drink a little bit more coffee than I should, uh, but that's okay. That's the 24. Um, longer fasts. Uh, I know well, this is a lecture on the beginning of intermittent fasting. So I don't want to go too much, but once again, if you're doing longer fasts, I would recommend you talking to your doctor or you, you know, at least get some counsel to make sure you're comfortable doing it. Uh, but it's, it's, it, the, people do longer fasts, two day fasts. I've done three day fasts. Um, you can do alternate day fasts. This is different than like a juice fast that people do. Okay. I did have a patient that I interviewed uh, about fasting because I was interested and she switched from the one meal day to alternate day fasting. And uh, I'll, I'll play that in a second for you, but let me talk about alternate day. So if, if you want the really like the cliff notes version of this, the cliff notes is if you have over 30 to 40 pounds to lose, I recommend doing alternate day fasting until you get to your core weight 
and then you go down to one meal a day or two meals a day. That's what I recommend. The way to see really fast progress is something called alternate day. Now, if you didn't think you could do one day, you're probably going to think I'm totally crazy by bringing up this alternate day, but I'm, I'm going to, because this is what really works for people. Okay. These are for under your doctor's guidance for diabetics. If you want to get them off of insulin, this is what works. Okay. But once again, do it with your doctor. Don't do it on your own. What you do is you alternate days, you fast. So either they do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Why? If you have a longer period of really low insulin, that's why it works. That's why alternate day works. And so what you'll do is on the eating days, you may only eat two meals on the eating days, but the, the fasting days you're going all day. Uh, the problem I had with alternate, I did alternate day fasting for three months just to, cause I like to test on myself. I had a hard time. It wasn't not eating. I had a hard time sleeping because I really like sleeping with the full tummy. And, and I tried to drink it and I'll talk about what you can do to help those, 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 those feelings of wanting to eat. We'll get to that in a second, how you deal with the, the, the pangs, the, the eating pangs or things like that. Okay. Um, there was a question here about um, artificial sweeteners. I, I think theoretically you can, but there is some research that shows it actually affects your mind, even though you're not having the sugar. Um, like, like stevia and things like that. Some people allow you to, I would just, I'll give you some resources after you guys can look it up. But I, I would, if you're doing just coffee, I would do just black. I try not to put stevia or other things because it makes your mind think you're having sugar. And so sometimes it still creates the same cravings. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this uh, anything, but you, you probably can. You have to just test your body, see how sensitive you are. Um, and also the question about breaking it something. Yes, this is a good question about how do you break a fast? Those are these longer ones. I don't know if you want all the details, guys, but I'll tell you. My alternate day ones, I always had like explosive diarrhea when I started to eat. Okay, that's a little too much information. But what you mean is your body, you're like totally, you're not eating anything. Then you eat all this food. So you have to go, go in easily. So how do you go in easily? You usually start it with like a small salad or you start it with some nuts or you start it with a smaller, a smaller meal. So what I used to do is I used to do a fast, let's say all day Monday, I came in Tuesday and I was maybe eating one meal. So I got home, I maybe had some nuts and a little bit something Then I went and took a shower and then I had my big meal. Okay. And that was a big meal because I'm eating every other day, but you do, you should warm up your, your tummy with something. Okay. Um, something that's a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to process and things like that. Okay, so yes, that's a good point of how to break. And this is for longer fast. Also, I'll, we'll go into details a little bit later, but um, for alternate day or one meal a day, like once again, I thought I was gonna die. So I, in the beginning I was doing, um, it's called bone broth. It's basically a soup, uh, a fatty soup where you take the bones and you boil them and you put vegetables in and you strain all that off and you just have that liquid, that fatty liquid. That fatty liquid is make, what makes you feel full and fat doesn't increase insulin. So that's what I did, okay, for my alternate day. Here's a little, uh, interview I did of a patient um, about um, for you sixteen eight. I started to plateau a little bit around September um, 2019 and all the way through till about May and I didn't really understand why and I started playing a game with my friend too so we both like you know <laughs> trying to see who can drop the most uh, percentage uh, in weight and so we have a, a game of five percent ten percent fifteen percent so it kind of motivated me to, to do something more. And um, so I started going from 16 to 18 to 20 hour fast. And I started noticing some results. But then, you know, there are a lot of because I had four kids and uh, I get a lot of skin, um, extra skins around my abdomen. I wanted to get rid of it. And people have suggested to go to 36 to 48 hours fasting. So that motivated me to just give it a, give it a try. And so I just basically jumped from about 18 to 20 hours. Uh, and I was just one week. I just said, let's just do 30, 36 hours and see how it goes. And um, I started, they suggested to drink a little bit of coffee and tea in the morning to tie me over. And that worked really well. And I think I get a little hungry right around the 24 hours. But if I, if I can just continue drinking water and the way I time it is right around the 24 hours around my bedtime. So if I can just fall asleep and wake up in the morning, then 7 a.m., then I can eat right away. So it kind of works out for me to not like be alert. 
Okay. I, I just wanted to put that because I like you to see. I, I, so whenever I have a patient that does really well, I interview them and I, I kind of learn what worked for them. And then in this specific patient, you can see that she ended her fast or 24 hour period at midnight. So let's say she started at 10 at night, going to 10 at night, right? And then, and then she woke up in the morning and then she was right to, into 36. Okay, that's the way you can do 36. You have to make it fit into your lifestyle. Um, what can I drink when I'm fasting? So you can drink cold water. You can drink hot water. I put salt here. Um, you can put drink tea, coffee, or bone broth. Um, you can drink these things. I prefer hot water and coffee and tea. So I do coffee until about noon and then I go to my tea. Uh, if I'm cold, sometimes I have hot water. And a lot of times with my water, I'll put salt in it. Because if you're going to do longer fast, like one meal a day or every other day, you're going to become salt depleted because we don't realize how much salt we have in our food that we eat. And um, there's a different type of coffee I'm going to show you in a, in a different type of uh, bone broth. I'll explain that in a second. Um, so here's, uh, where are they at right here? Okay, we're gonna get to that in a second. So um, that's what I do for, for drinking. Um, can I work out? Yes, you can work out um, and you can work out in the fasted state. Do you need a pre-workout, during workout, post-workout? No, I think that's just to make money. If you're looking to lose weight, you, you work out and then I work out at 5.30 in the morning and then I eat at 5.30 at night. So you're gonna be totally fine. How to manage hunger. The number one thing about managing hunger is hot beverages. Okay, hot beverages like hot tea, hot coffee, hot water, um, that, that makes you feel full. The second thing that works really well is keeping you busier. Okay, you have to be busy. If you're, if you're just kind of at home not doing anything, you're going to eat. Okay, if you're bored, you're going to eat. So keep yourself occupied. Is it hard to concentrate? Um, some people have a hard time. Certain days I do have a hard time concentrating, but usually coffee helps me. So coffee gets me through. Um, the bigger problem is the days I can't drink coffee, but if I'm drinking coffee, I'm usually okay and I keep busy and my helps my concentration. It takes practice. If I have diabetes, ask your doctor. Okay, I, this is not, I'm not, this isn't medical advice. Okay, you should talk to your doctor, especially if you have diabetes or you have insulin. Um, there's a really good book called The Diabetes Code that I recommend. Um, can women fast? Yes, women can fast. There are certain issues with, um, you know, it depends on how extended your fasts are. Once again, you should talk to your doctor if you have any concerns. Um, things like that. Is fasting the same as eating calories? No. And this is what I want to get at. If you typically eat three meals right now, okay, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you eat all three of those meals at dinner, you're eating the same amount of calories, but you're still going to lose weight because you only have one insulin spike. Does that make sense? So you can eat the same three meals. It's really hard to eat three meals at once. I've tried, but you try to eat like breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. Um, it's hard to do but some of you might be able to. Uh, I usually do almost a meal and a half. Um, what are possible side effects? There's a, lo a, a lot you might feel like, like I talked, difficulty concentrating, having hunger, um, being more irritable, being hangry, um, you know, having a diarrhea. Um, if you go for a long time without eating and then eating, is it dangerous? I guess if, you, if, if you're feeling unsecure about it, stop. You can stop at any time you want just by eating, right? You can you know, I think it's more dangerous to be really overweight for a long period of time. Vitamins, just a daily multivitamin. Medications, talk to your doctor once again. Most people just uh, either if they usually have breakfast um, with their medicines, they might take it at lunchtime when they eat if they're doing a, a 16-8. How to talk to your doctor. I would, I would prepare. I would research and uh, learn as much as you can and then go talk to your doctor and um, ask, you know, and basically let them see the results. You know, you should talk to your doctor, but letting them see the results and just kind of say, you know, this is working for me. This is why I'm doing it. Uh, and these are the results. And a lot of times with the results there, they'll be, they'll let you try it. Okay. Um, some fasting tips. Okay. These are some tips I've learned and mistakes I've made. First of all, don't tell anyone. Okay. Don't tell anyone until they start seeing that your clothes are too big for you. Okay. That's a, just, you don't have to tell just, just, oh, you know, I'm just, I don't say I'm fasting. Okay, guys. Like, uh, just say, you know, I'm, I'm just not hungry or I'm, I'm not, I don't want to eat right now. You know, you don't have to tell people you're fasting. I'm not eating breakfast. I'm fasting. Cause a lot of times socially, I can still have a coffee. If my friends are going out for lunch, I can just drink a coffee or I can drink a coffee for breakfast and you don't have to tell people drink a lot of water, stay busy, drink coffee, ride the waves. Hunger comes in waves. So I recommend riding the waves. Okay. So you feel the hunger. I'm hungry. I feel like I'm going to die. And then you, you feel it, you wait five or 10 minutes. Maybe you can put a timer on 
And then if you feel unhealthy after that, you can have something, but you just ride the waves. It takes practice and give yourself a month to adjust. It takes time and then go slow. Like I did, you just skip breakfast for, you know, you can do, it doesn't have to be every day, a couple of days a week, and then slowly build yourself up. And I want you to be aware that fasting isn't an excuse to eat whatever you want. So just because you're eating one meal a day, doesn't mean you should just eat really bad food that one meal or eat uh, only uh, a big ice cream brownie sundae. And then it should fit into your life. So for me, I have two young kids, I have a family. That's why I eat one meal a day because I like to eat dinner with my family. Another thing I didn't like about the alternate day is that I, uh, I didn't have dinner. Like I had soup with my, I had the bone broth soup with my family in, instead of eating. So it has to fit into your life, okay? And I, I do a lot of my, a lot of ex, I do a lot of my extended fast when I travel. If I'm traveling for business, go to a conference, I don't have any social obligations. I'll just fast the whole time because I don't have any obligations. Okay. Um, here's some myths I want to go over. Um, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's actually not. That's why a lot of people, when they get up, they don't feel hungry. But I think our society and especially the food industry tells us that we need to eat first thing up and then we have to eat all day long. I think it's because of the food industry, not so much that it's, it's the most important meal of the day. Eating small frequent meals isn't the same as eating one big meal. I, I think it's better to eat one big meal because you have one insulin spike. If you eat multiple small meals, like I said, your insulin is going to be high so you can never get into the fat burning. Um, you can't work out. Yes, you can. You can eat whatever you want. You know, I tend to say, I think good food choices are important. And what I tend to find is that once people start to lose weight with fasting, they change the way they work out and they change the way they eat because they're seeing small wins. They're seeing improvement. Um, we already talked about losing muscle mass. You're not going to lose muscle mass. Your body, you're not going to go low on blood sugar unless you're doing some type of diabetes medicine. Once again, talk to your doctor, but your, your body naturally produces through your liver, uh, produces glucose. And my metabolism will slow down when fasting. That's not true as well. Okay. People think they need to eat seven small meals a day. So their metabolism keeps up. It's just the latest research doesn't show that. Um, so your metabolism isn't going to slow down. If you're doing um, fasting the same way for a lot of days, that might um, happen. So that's why we're kind of varying it up. Certain days eating more, certain days eating less. Some pitfalls. Um, I find that people, some mistakes are the, the hunger pangs. Once again, you have to ride the waves. Lightheadedness or dizziness. That a lot of times is due to salt. So if you're feeling lightheaded, uh, drink water with salt in it. Okay. Um, also for me, it's caffeine helps me. And then binge eating, just be careful of that. In the beginning, you might do that. Like after I was doing these alternate day fastings, man, did I eat a lot. And, and then I, must, and I had to take a nap because I, I eat so much. Um, let me show you a few tricks. I'll share a few tricks. This is my favorite one lately. It's called bulletproof coffee. I do this every morning when I'm fasting and it's fine. Um, I take a blender. I take a, a big cup of coffee, a tablespoon of butter, Okay, so I, I basically have my salted, it's salted butter, okay, where there's little, there's little dividers on your butter stick. I cut one of those and I actually pre-cut a whole, a whole bar of it and I put it in the fridge. A tablespoon of MCT oil. MCT oil is coconut oil without the bad smell of coconut and it costs 10 times as much. That's all MCT oil is. A medium chain trans something or other oil. Uh, it's expensive, but it, it really kind of, it fills you up and it's all fat. And so it doesn't raise your insulin. And I do some cinnamon. So that's called a bulletproof coffee. I've been doing that, um, it's, it's in about three months. Um, actually some mornings I can't even take, cause it's so fatty. I can't even drink it. Some of them just want regular black coffee, but that's what I do in the morning. One of those, and then I'll go to my regular coffee. And then at lunch, I'll switch to tea. A bone broth. Let me teach you about bone broth. In the beginning, I was doing this when I did my alternate day fast. And even my, yeah, it was more alternate day. My, my one meal a day, I didn't really need it. But what you do is you get some bones, put some onions, garlic, carrots, salt, peppercorn, spices, a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, I'm sorry, a lot of salt. And then uh, white vinegar, I guess you can put in here. You can get your own recipe, make your own. Basically, you put a little jar and you're going to see this like big layer of fat. And this is what I heated up and I put a lot of salt on it. And when my kids were eating dinner, I had my bone broth when I was doing my alternate day ones. Okay. So you might need to do that if you feel like you need something else. A lot of, just did I mention salt? A lot of salt. Um, I'm going to give you some resources here if you want to learn more. Um, once again, uh, a, a link to these slides, uh, I'll, I'll send you guys out as well. Um, uh, here's a good uh, intro on the diet doctor. They have a good intro to intermittent fasting. The books I recommend, either The Obesity Code, Diabetes Code, Complete Guide to Fasting, or Life in the Fasting Lane. And there's some YouTube videos from, from Dr. Fong. 
and Dr. Berg. Those are some good ones as well. So just a, a little checklist here for you guys. Uh, so when to eat, what to eat when fasting, water, coffee, tea, bone broth, times to fast, I would start at 16, eight, then go to 24 and then go to alternate day. And uh, I would recommend you keeping busy, drinking water and coffee, reducing your stress. Stress is a, a big cause of um, difficulty fasting. Don't tell anyone. Track when you eat versus what. So that's kind of a neat thing. People are used to tracking what they eat. Just track the hours. That's kind of an easier way. And then uh, why it works, insulin regulation. Here's some other resources I'll put here. And I'll send you guys a link to this as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me, don at centralmasspodiatry.com. Um, there are some intermittent fasting support groups around as well, uh, you can, if you're interested in that. And then uh, also, if you have a smartphone, you can take a picture of this with a Q, with your cell phone and it's a QR code. You can download the presentation if you want. I'll put the presentation in the chat as well. 